Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Sam. And I'm Melissa. I grew up in the FLDS community. Uh, it's a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs, which I moved out of when I was 18 years old. And today we have a special guest, Amanda Ray. <laughs> Back with us. Thanks for yeah. being here. Some of you probably recognize we did a video a couple weeks together, which was super fun and had the two parts. And then we were like, oh my gosh, we got to get together again mm -hmm. and answer some awesome questions that we, we have, have. We have another hundred questions to ask. I felt like, was, I don't know about you guys, but I felt like it really was like a family reunion. Like, yeah. Even though we had never yeah. met. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. See, I was like, I'm so excited for her to come back. So. Yeah. I know a couple of you have mentioned that it must be nice having people to reach out to and be with. And it really is. It's mm -hmm. a, it, someone that has been in a similar situation right. that I have and grew up in that type of uh, environment. It's very amazing to have that support and other people out here like that. So yeah. very true. And we love when you have questions for all of us as a group because it gives us more excuses to be able to hang out. Yep. <laughs> so we will be doing more, right? Yeah. Yes. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and today we kind of wanted to focus more on Amanda's story because our last videos were all just kind of comparing the two mm -hmm. groups and some similarities and differences, but we wanted to ask you some fun details yes. of your story. Sounds good. So the first one is, so you grew up in the Kingston group, mm -hmm. uh, that playmates group. Where did you grow up? So where are they that based city? out of? Yeah. Oh, okay. So... If you go back to like when I was a little girl, um, they had church actually in this, do you know Standard Restaurant Supplies? Yeah. I've heard of you them. You do? Yeah. Okay, so they own all of them. There's one like in Arizona that it's like branched off, but the church actually, when I was a young child, it was held in like the like attic or upstairs area of Standard Restaurant Supplies. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So we would go, because it was such a small group at the time, we would go to church and it would be like kind of an unfinished room that we would all be a part of, but it was on, um, it was in West Valley. In West Valley, okay. Um, Salt Lake City, West Valley area. So in but, Northern Utah. Yeah, yeah, and we did like our classes there. And then obviously they believed in having a child every year once you get married, so it grew pretty fast. So one year apart, each child oh, yeah. was one year apart? Oh, yeah, if you oh, didn't, wow. like my mom had some miscarriages in between, um, Two of my brothers, because at the time she was pretty mm -hmm. depressed and my dad was marrying his sister. Long story, but <laughs> she had a big gap in between. Like, I think the boys were like two or three years apart and she got shamed for that. Wow. A lot of people were like, well, why is there such a big age gap? Like, you should have been having kids between them. That's so hard on a woman's Ridiculous. body. Oh I know. Gosh. Were, were you nervous about that? For me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, did not want to do that. I can imagine that would be nerve wracking mm -hmm. to, to know that you were expected to have mm -hmm. a child every year. And machine. my mom would be honest about it. I think I talked about this on our last video. Like, she was very honest about how she felt. She was like, oh, they just want me to be pregnant all the time. And I'm like, they, they do. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they really do. But so, yeah, so we moved from the standard restaurant supplies to, they call it Damon Palmer. It's in West Valley, right off of Redwood Road. Okay. But it's just a huge warehouse now, and that's where they have their church. So, the Kingston Church or otherwise known as the order mm -hmm. they own the standard this this company oh yeah okay they own a lot of businesses if you just like wikipedia kingston businesses it will hundreds <clears throat> hundreds of businesses they're very wow. business savvy how many wow. people would you say are members of that of the order um I would say now, if I do the math correctly, I, I, they have to have over 10,000. I've had arguments with like my sisters. They're like, no, they don't. But if you think about it, the leader, Paul, has um, 28 wives, just himself, mm -hmm. and over three, 300 kids. 300 from one man. Wow. And then his kids are having kids, and they're all getting married as teenagers, right? So it has to be over 10,000 easy. That's crazy. So being in West Valley, I mean, you, Sam's group was off on kind of in their own town but you guys mm -hmm. were in with i don't want to say like normal people that sounds weird but like but yeah just yeah with like normal society what did that look like like did you all live on the same street like were you in all in the same exact area or were you spread out Definitely all over the valley spread out and um i mean there's a lot in west valley like it just redwood road if i were to drive down from like 900 or 990th south or whatever to um where the capital is area yeah there's like oh, hundreds and hundreds of polygamous families out there wow. and their businesses too like john's marketplace um true value is owned by them like all the ones on red road i feel like most of them if it's like an arctic circle run by an outside company it's rented from does that make sense yeah a lot of the properties are owned by them gotcha. Interesting. it's kind of crazy how much <laughs> they really do control so if as a young person out there growing up if if you go to work do you work at these places mm -hmm. that they own yeah especially being a woman 
So women and men obviously have different like um, expectations, but being a woman and single, they do not want you to go to public school. They do not want you to have a public job oh. because they want to keep you, you know, thinking how oh, they yeah. want you to think. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so we didn't have like, everyone needs to live in this certain area. It was kind of just like, make sure that you're at church every Sunday, make sure that, you know, and, and your house obviously has to be in, in like the group. Mm -hmm. So you don't get to have your name on the home. It's like all turned into the- Okay, the so home. the leader, so the church owns all the properties for oh, everyone. Because yeah. mm -hmm. okay. to get into heaven, one of the biggest uh, things that they believe, I don't know if FLDS believe this too, but it's like consecration. Everything LDS believe that, yeah. Yep. Has to be consecrated in the name of the Lord. So if you have a house and let's say you want your kids to have it when you die, they have to buy it. <laughs> From the order, even if you already paid for it. So wow. it's like really weird. I mean, that's one way to get more money, I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they're definitely very interested in money, which is why like, like we were saying, we're, we're in this city where it's like a lot of other people, right? In normal society, but the leader and his brothers, they kind of do business with a lot of people. They kind of, I, I feel like it's like, and I've heard people say this before, the mafia of the polygamous groups. It kind mm. of is. Yeah. Dang. I'll be a member of the family. So you're expecting to go to church, but they were all different. And you had said kind of before, so what's the setup for the family where you have that many? Do they all live in the same house or? Um, I think this is also another way for them to get more money. This is just my, in my brain, but mm -hmm. they don't, I don't, I know of one family that chose to all live in the same home. And I think it was to save money or something, but mm. like my, the first wife in my family has her own home. My mom has her own home. The third wife has her own home. Um, maybe when my mom would move out of a home, then the third wife would move into that home. Okay. We never would cohabitate. Wow. And then, and then each mother's kids would be in that home with her? Is that how oh, that yeah. worked? Mm -hmm. okay. So like my mom and my biological brothers and sisters, we all lived in the same home. Um, Christmases, we would go and like stay the night over like the first wife's house or something, but it was never like we were living and cohabitating together. I feel like there would my mom would have like beat up her sister. I really feel like that. Cause we had gone on family vacations and they nearly did beat each other up because it's like, who gets to stay in the front seat with, with the husband? Who oh, gets yeah. to have the attention? I, oh I can only gosh. imagine, I can only yeah. imagine. So. How many wives did your father have? So he had three. He married my mom's sister first and then my mom when she was 17. Your mom's a second wife. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when my mom had her like fourth, was pregnant with her fourth or fifth kid, then he got engaged to his own sister. Cause what had happened Just is, sister. Mm -hmm. and she's kind of, I don't want to like offend anyone, but like her, her like mental capacity was not as progressed, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. She so, wasn't as mature. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people didn't really want to marry her. And this is what my mom had told me is that she um, was single and there was this meeting and my dad was a part of the meeting with these numbered men and they were like, we need to get her married so that she can bring children to the earth. And a lot of people didn't want to marry her. And he, then my dad, after this meeting, has direction that he should be the one to marry her. My mom almost left him over that. She was so upset. I don't even know how to start unpacking the amount of questions that are in I my know. head right now. <laughs> like, yeah. sorry. like, let's all, let's all as a group here, just like take a deep breath and try to just like digest. unpack, <laughs> just digest what just happened. That yeah. is so crazy. So, does he have children with his sister? Yes, and you can tell. What, Do they have full-blooded sister? Um, same dad, different moms. So half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he married his half sister, was the third wife, and they, he just has a total of three wives. Yep. Okay. Just three. So his just <laughs> just a modest three. three. A modest three. <laughs> a modest three. <laughs> no big deal. Um. So did they have like disabilities from um, being so closely related? I never like because we don't we don't go to doctors, so there was no ever like um anyone like diagnosing them. An official diagnosis. But you can see like my brother who was born the same year as the um third wife's first son, mm -hmm. completely different. My brother has excelled in school, ha is very good at communicating, is pretty normal for his age, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas this one is like struggling. Struggling. Okay. And I feel like I've noticed that with all of her kids is there's something a little bit off with them. And I do think that it is, first of all, maybe because she may have had some form of social disability. And then on top of that, the gene pool is a lot smaller. Yeah. yeah. Now, is that the only example, like in the group, is it common for people to marry their sisters? Or was that just like an exception to... It's pretty, it's more common than it should be. Definitely. I mm. saw people marrying their half siblings while I was there. 
Like mm-hmm. I saw them getting married. So it wow. was it's not like something in the past, like it still happens. It's still happening right now. I must say that's never anything I witnessed or knew of in the FLDS. Mm-hmm. I never I never knew of anything like that happening. Maybe it did at some point, uh, but Man, that is just so interesting. I know. Wow. And like my mom had came from the outside, so to her even it was like shocking. And so I'm still shocked that she stayed, but I'm shocked that a lot of people So did. your mom came from the outside. Mm-hmm. What brought her into the Kingston group? Her so her dad is the not the original leader, but the leader before Paul. First wife's brother, or one of his wife's brothers. So her dad okay. is related to one of the wives. Gotcha. He was never a part of it, but he had family in it. Okay. So they would come to the dances and it was kind of like, it didn't seem like a cult back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then um, her sister ends up marrying this guy in the the group, right? She gets to know them even more. And then at a very young age, they were like talking about marrying him. I mean, I can imagine how hard, I mean, from my group, my my dad's first wife uh, was was a convert from outside of the church. So I can imagine how hard that must have been. For you know, so especially for your mom being the second wife, right? Coming at coming from the outside and then being married second, mm-hmm. that wow. So and she was pretty young. You said how do you know how she seventeen? Was? Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, right. She got engaged. She didn't want to marry him either. Like this whole I could do a whole video on this. It's a, <laughs> it's a really kind of a sad story, but like polygamy wasn't not normal because because they were around it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it didn't seem like crazy. But um, then when she got into it, she realized like how much different she thought it, you know, it was. Like, Wait a minute, thought. what did I sign up for here? And oh, she's yeah. still yeah. in right now. Yeah, she is. So if you watched Escape and Polygamy, she did leave on the show. Oh. Okay. But um, like a few months later, my dad had convinced her that like the whole like, you know, you're going to hell and bringing your kids to hell with you. Mm. It's so much pressure. A, a guilt right? trip. Yeah, shame. Yeah, yeah parent shame. Mm-hmm. So she ended up going back. Uh, well, it's, um, it's, I mean, you, you see you see people stay married or see people stay together throughout the world in so many different, you know, religions situations. and backgrounds and situations. And it's, it's just, it's hard to understand why people stay together when it's not good for them. But, mm-hmm. but it, everyone has their reasons. Happens. Yeah, it happens a lot. So how many siblings did you have? Like how many came um, from your mother and how many have siblings do you have? So my mom had 10 kids total, so five boys, five girls. Those are all my biological. And then the first wife had 15. Okay. The third wife has, I think, six or seven. I haven't met some of the ones, some of the new ones because I've been out. So I think total about thir- maybe 35, I mm-hmm. think. And okay. where, do you, where do you fit into the, your biological 10? I'm the second oldest. Second oldest. Oh, wow. Yeah. You have a lot of younger siblings. Yeah. I was going to say, so mm-hmm. had there been a lot of siblings of yours that have left? Um, of my mom's family, so I had le- I was the first to leave, okay. but my sister was like going through a divorce and stuff, so she was kind of le- in the process of leaving as well, my older sister. Uh-huh. And then it was like every year or so after that, when my younger sister became 18, she left, and she's like documented on the show as well. <laughs> that uh-huh. was when I started getting involved with the show. Okay. And then a year after that, my little brother Esco leaves, and he documented it as well. So um, four total, including me, out of my mom's family. So she still okay. has six with her. Is that everybody that's old, like old enough to have left? Are there any um, that are like 18 and have still stayed? There are two that are 18 and are still there. Um, it kind of stopped. The, it stopped happening because there's my one brother was really, he had a lot of respect for my dad, mm. and I think mm. that's where it kind of shifted because me and my other siblings had seen him do a lot of weird stuff, mm-hmm. and we had been there for our mom through all the stuff that had happened, yeah. and I think he didn't see that side of my dad. Gotcha. So I think that kind of pushed us over, but I can yeah. see that. So do you still have a communication or relationship with your siblings that are still out there? That are still in the cult? still in the older in the um, order cult. It's kind. It's definitely not what it was. But I am grateful that my mom will sometimes allow me to come over. I'm not allowed to come over for like holidays. Like okay. that's just kind of been a thing. Like, um, is that and, because everybody gets together on holidays? Yeah, and I think that that's the biggest part. Like, if I go over there, then there's gonna be like drama because, oh, yeah. like, the first wife. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like my mom's not as strict as like the average family because because of, of like she did come from the outside world and she did um, she had like no friends when she mm-hmm. joined this cult and her only friends were her kids for a right. while. So when she lost us, she couldn't like cope with it. Mm-hmm. So I remember my 18th birthday was like my worst, the worst memory ever it was. I was trying to celebrate on the outside and my mom had said, oh, maybe we can bring the kids to your birthday party. 
I show up to, you know, Willer Farm. Mm, okay. I show up there, that's where the birthday party is supposed to be. Not, ain't, no siblings were there. It was just my mom and she had given me a photo album of all of my siblings. Mm. Told me that if I went back, I would see them again. But she was always like, I'll still be your mom. Like, I still want to have good. that relationship with you. So it's, it's been like a kind of a love-hate <laughs> relationship. Yeah. But um, I do get to see my siblings. I don't know. It, it really depends on the, the setting, I guess. Because I don't know. You didn't really get to have like a relationship with your family, right? Once, once I moved out, I was not really welcome back. No. Yeah. So no. I went kind of through that in the beginning, but I would like fight it. Mm -hmm. My mom still wanted to be a part of my life, but she was like, we, dad says you can't be with your siblings because you're a bad example, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I would fight it and I would, I would show up sometimes and I would just go say hi to my, they're my siblings. Right. Know? But I still don't have a, a good, good relationship with them, but I'm able to see them. I, I want to say like maybe once a, a month. Once a month. Okay. If, if that. Yeah. But it really just depends too if my mom's like, well, your dad's coming over, so what, you better not, or mm -hmm. um, tonight's not a good night, or, mm -hmm. or if she's like feeling, it's weird. I feel like a lot of order members do this back and forth thing like they want. If she's want. feeling guilty or not. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it all depends on the, that, that family <laughs> night's teaching, I'm sure. I really think so. And it, it really hurt me a lot because I would be like on my way over to her house to go see my siblings after not seeing them for a month. And then she would call me and be like, um, actually, not tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I did go through, this is what I'm going through right now. I distanced myself because I didn't like being like rejected over and over. Yeah. <laughs> and that's emotionally because, so hard. I can understand that. I, mm -hmm. I almost, uh, I, you know, for when I first moved out, I, I tried to go back several times, you know, I had that very strong relationship and wasn't really accepted. And so over time you're like, well, I'm causing more harm than I am good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you cause the drama with the family yeah. and then, and then they don't want you there. And it's just like, Oh, you know, yeah. it's tough. And definitely I've had times where I would be there and I would be welcomed at my mom's house. And like the first wife would show up and see that I'm there mm. and just cause drama and yell at my mom in front of me. She would like yell at her and be like, how could you bring this to your, to your family? Wow. How could you bring this? And I would be standing right there like, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. But That's what if you ran into your father? Um, I have, okay. it, there's been a few times and he's been good about it. Um, because I think just because he knows, like, I don't know. It's been weird. I don't know if you saw the episode of Escaping Pulling Me where he came to my wedding. I don't think I've seen that oh, one. I think have, I've seen did you that. See that. It was a there? very long time ago. Yeah. That yeah. I he's that. had, I feel like he has this internal thing where like, that's my daughter, but like, I need to shun her. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if he was born in a normal life, he would be a really good dad. Okay. So he's never been like, get out right now, but he has been like, he has Distant. confronted me a few times. Yeah, you shouldn't be here or something like that. More of like, just he knows that it makes me uncomfortable when he's there. Oh, he hasn't okay. been like, leave, but he'll just like, ask me questions that make me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah. he's never been, which I do appreciate, he's never been like, get off the property right now. You know? Yeah. That's good. How close? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I was just gonna point out that I feel like my father's done a good job as well of like treating me well. Mm -hmm. But that's that's to say in front of my face, definitely right. behind your back. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I would hear what my mom would say, and I'm like, I, can you not tell me this stuff? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to know what how he's telling the kids why they shouldn't trust me. Probably to scare them from leaving. Yeah, I guarantee. talking horribly about you. This is what happens if you leave. Right, and yeah. then it, it makes them not trust me too. Mm, that's mm -hmm. tough. That's so hard. So in a situation where like each mother has their own home, did you consider the other mothers mothers or like, and how close were you to the siblings? And that's kind of two questions um, about that. That's a good question though. Uh, it's kind of different family per family, but for me, I think because my mom like would fight so much with the first wife that there kind of was a rift between the family mm. and like we would fight for our dad's approval. There was, there was a period where like there was a, an obvious competition between the families really and then our family kind of stopped caring because we all like if this make how does this how do i explain it to where it makes sense like it got to a point where i didn't care about like if my dad liked me the most or whatever mm -hmm. that's gonna be hard yeah well it was like he had like 30 kids right he had a lot of kids competing for his attention but um yeah so I was close to a few of the half siblings that were my age. Like I had a brother 
who was born the same year as me. And my mm. mom and they, they got pregnant around the same time, which is kind of gross, but. Um, <laughs> so I was pretty close with him. And then she had a daughter, the first wife had a daughter that was my younger sister's age, and we were kind of close. I got really close towards the end with, I had a half brother who was, who came out as gay to me. Oh, wow. And we got really close and bonded over that. And he ended up leaving later, but we weren't super close with the family. I was really close with my biological family. And I never called the other wife's mom. Ever. And I feel like if I did, my mom would be like, ew. Like, <laughs> no, I, was gonna say, I was like, what did you call That's them? So did you just call them by their first names? Yeah, or? just be like, um, yeah, for first name basis. Okay. Definitely. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we all called him dad. I mean, when I was younger, I didn't know he was my dad because I wasn't the first wife. So I didn't call, I called him by his first name too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you man. guys were allowed to know who your dad was. Oh, yeah. Well, they all lived we, in the same house. We all lived in the same house. Oh, yeah. All the mothers were <laughs> in the same true. house. We grew up as one family. I yeah. mean, we, we knew who our mother was and who belonged to who, but... Uh, but but we all lived together. I grew up with uh, my half siblings and my full blooded siblings just as much together as like they stay in the same rooms. Yeah, same Girl. rooms. Did everything together. It was more based on who was around my age that I spent most of the time with. Right, right. So um, how old were you when you knew that who your father was? Um, and like, how did that like as a young child? Did you just think your mom was a single mom? Or yeah, I look back and I'm like, why did that make sense to me? <laughs> but like, you didn't know any different, right? And they were lying to me. 